Okay, it is a Tuesday, 9.29 a.m., um, the 11th day of December. <laughs> wow. Alright, it is 9.29 a.m., uh, just about 20 seconds before the market opens, uh, January the 11th, 2022, and I don't have this thing too organized. I've been just watching my uh, the video I made yesterday just to go over how I went in terms of trading and just to get an idea from it, but... It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to be focused on morning panic bounce plays. And if it's a proper one with a nice daily chart and it looks clean and everything, I'll trade that with a $38 risk level. Anything else OTC related will still be a $10 risk level. And if there are any listed stock setups, I'll stick to a $5 risk level. Looks like TGGI is having a bit of a downtrend. I'll be watching this one, but uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Just looking at morning panic bounce plays right now. Okay, it is 9.39. I had a trade here with AXXA, but I do want to go over TGGI. I did not get filled with TGGI because I didn't have my limit at the right price. This was a very sharp turnaround, and this one was a gap down morning panic bounce plays. And from my experience, at least as of right now, um, you know, in terms of this day, one of the best morning panic bounce plays are the ones that have a gap down. So you can see the previous close was 10.85, and then it opens at... Um, it opens, you know, much lower than where it um, freaking closed at. So I made a nice um, move towards the town side. It's still downtrended a little bit, but sometimes when it has a gap down, you have to pretend that panic already happened, and now you're just waiting for it to turn around. Some kind of level two reversal or something like that. This one was just really quick. I don't. Yeah, I have a canceled order here. And that was 9:31, right before 9:32, and I was trying to get in when it was down here because it looks like it was going to do a nice level two reversal. Um, I don't even remember why anymore. It might have been just because there was a lot of people hitting the ask and the bid was starting to stack up. Um, that's usually it, but um, I just had my limit a little too low so I didn't get failed because it did a quick turnaround from when it closed right to 77 and um, you know it transitioned. You know, it made a nice move towards the upside. I was watching this to see if it could downtrend under VWAP and maybe put like a higher low. Um, ideally from this panic bottom here, it didn't do it. It just kept up trending, which is cool. You know, I didn't, you know, well, get in this one, but I did get in AXXA. And um, I'm happy I did size up a little bit. Initially, I only had like 15,000 shares. I did do 20,000 shares because... It is a bit more of an ideal morning panic bounce play, best case scenario. Um, I, I think you can still hear the shakiness in my voice, but best case scenario, um, I should have traded 30,000 shares, but that's fine. I, I at least traded, tr um, at le I at least traded 20,000 shares, and I got in at 9:37. It was like a level two reversal, you know, a little scary because you never know if you're gonna actually, you know, get it. But it, it looks like it was gonna be the bottom. People were showing up at the bid. People were taking out the ask. It was starting to uptrend a little. Um, really good entry, honestly, at 9.37. Uh, right before 9.38, as you can see the time there, I was in at 3.93, which was right here. Right, and I was in it for that morning panic bounce play, 20,000 shares. And when it started to work um, a little at 9.38, just to lower my risk, I sold half of my position at 3.97 right here with my entry right here. I don't really mind that. That kind of helps me hold on to a uh, trade better. And you know, just in case that it uptrends a little bit and then it just breaks under my entry, I at least sold some profitably. So then it's not, you know, that much of a, um, a loss. If I have to cut losses quickly, but um, the only thing I didn't like about this one is that VWAP was super close super close that probably meant there was a lot of people dumping their shares throughout this downtrend you know ideally VWAP could have been like at 42 or something like that instead it was at 40 um, almost 40 once and then I saw the other 10,000 shares at um, 409 that was right here at the same minute yeah 938 I sold um, right here my last 10,000 shares my first 10,000 shares was about right here at 97 so I sold half here so the other half here with my entry here and um, why did I sell the other half here because it hit VWAP that's always my goal I mean it wasn't necessarily you know right at VWAP my sell I guess I did sell this section above VWAP but if it gets pretty close to VWAP I'll take it and it did hold 
V went for a little bit, right? It even made a move to 419. But I'm pretty happy with it. Um, maybe I could have held on to my first 10,000 shares a little longer, but hindsight is 2020. I don't regret that too much. I'm not sure how much I made. I I have no clue. I think maybe I made like 20 bucks from this trade. I'm not. I'm not extremely sure. This could be a double bottom setup. I don't like the big seller at the ask, but uh, this could be a setup. I won't. I'll trade the 10,000 share position just because of the fact that. It's not a regular morning pan, uh, panic bounce play. I already had one, so it's you know not as ideal if you ask me. But I don't like this big seller that just got taken out. But then there's another one at four. I like the big bidder here, but I don't want to fight a wall. You know, I don't want to just go head in straight towards a wall that doesn't break. So. I don't mind if I miss this one just because I had a nice trade here and I just you know want to take it a bit easy um, but I'll make an update later maybe I'll trade it maybe I won't if this guy didn't exist I'd be in the setup already but um, yeah that guy's there and it seems like a real person who just got taken out Wow. Well, well at that point I don't know if it's gonna have much range but I'll keep watching this all right, it is 9:59. I do have an interest in ENZZ. I do see like a turnaround. Seems like it's trying to turn around, but big seller at 183 has not disappeared this entire time. It might end up being like AXXA, where it just wipes it out. And um, last recording was around here. It broke the level, got rid of the big seller at the ask. But unfortunately, it had a huge spread. You can see 399 was a bit in it. It shot up as high as 415, so that basically killed any interest I had in trading it because of that fact uh, that it just had a wide spread, so it wasn't really something that I could be able to get in and get out of. So I don't mind if I miss this one right here. Um, it is doing exactly what I would want it to do with up trading and everything, but um, I just don't like again how there is that big seller at 183. Maybe I'm just, I'm just being too chicken, but it looks like somebody might have tried to take him out with that 300,000 share um, purchase right there. That's a lot of volume. Yeah, that's a big seller there, I wonder. You know, this one can work out. It might take some time. It might eventually take out 183, but I don't want to be in it right here. And then, you know, the big sellers and everything like that, dumping on the bid, bad price action, and it just kind of downtrends again. and. I don't know, it seems like it could totally do a move towards the upside. I might just consider the trade anyway and just be smaller. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to be looking at. The bid looks kind of thin, although there might be a wall of bidders hiding. But I don't like how 751 is right there at the bid, the third one right here, when it could very well... Yeah, it probably won't just immediately draw to 11.5, but that is not helping me, you know, be interested in being long this setup here. I do like how VWAP is a good distance away. I guess not too much, but it's enough for me to consider it. You know, even though the range maybe isn't that much, at least, you know, it won't just, you know, break the day low and end up at 9 pennies or something crazy like that. I will continue the washes I like the big bidder at 11.5 not necessarily the price but I like that we do have a big bidder uh, maybe if it makes a downtrend to like the 11.6 level and it holds higher than this range right here in the 11.5s I'll be interested in that potentially I just don't like that big seller there at 11.83 Okay, it is uh, 10.16 and um, I lost two pennies trading ENZC. Uh, really happy with my second sell, but um, this one just did not work out. And um, the idea was that this is going to break this 11.75 level. I had a bit of a panic. You know, it's eventually trying to turn around, turn around, turn around, and then it just doesn't break uh, this level at 11.75. And now that I'm looking at it, now that I'm out of the trade, honestly, if you were to draw. Maybe for example, a trend line. I guess playing it off of this candle right here, the corner of this green candle, and then if we extend this to the right, 
That actually makes a lot of sense how it just failed the trend line that it was making there and then it broke under it. This is like um, what you can call, um, it looks like an ascending triangle but it broke under. So normally ascending triangles break up but this one broke down with some considerable volume and now it's trading with a spread which is always desperate price action whenever that happens. But I did get in and what happened was is that the big 256,000 share sell or whatever it was at. 1183 disappeared which was good and I wasn't extremely sure I was it took a while for me to get in this setup because I was thinking maybe that big seller is gone but maybe if we just uptick a little he's gonna reveal itself again maybe it's just tucked away for right now <laughs> that's a weird way to put it but um, you know he just tucked away and then surprise I'm here <laughs> um, I, I don't know it's kind of weird the way I said that but um, that's that's what I was worried about that maybe I would be in and again it does that so what made me get in the setup was that eventually um, there was a like a 10,000 share seller that showed up at like 11.9 so I thought okay well in that sense it probably would have showed the the big seller that was there at 11.83 um, it would probably just reveal itself at that point because you know this one at 11.9 is showing so maybe he's actually gone and if I had to guess, maybe that big seller decided to hide his size and then maybe start trying to sell at 11.75, which actually worked out. And um, that was the case there. So I was in at 11.74. I think I have the actual price because Fidelity isn't really the best at um, taking care of stuff like that. But I took a screenshot because of the fact that it revealed um, exactly what my entry was so 11 this was me 11 7 3 5 that was my entry 11 7 3 5 not 11 7 4 and um, I was in at 1009 which was right here 1009 11 7 4 you know just right under 11 7 4 but I was in right here and I did sell at 10.14 half of my position just to lower my risk because it wasn't looking like it was going to you know, make a move. It wasn't looking that nice. I got out at 11.73 and then the last 500 shares I did sell at 11.74 at 10.15 right before it broke under. You can see almost 10.16 I was able to actually still sell at 11.74 which was you know very uh, something very fortunate you know very fortunate that to have um, a nice sell there that was really on fidelity's part because as soon as I clicked on the place button it's like it immediately executed before like before I even let go of the mouse after I clicked it, it was that fast um, obviously it wasn't that fast but it felt that fast I got really a really nice execution there um, at 11.74 so I lost two pennies from this trade which is totally fine if I can make 20-ish bucks on a winning trade and lose two, two pennies on a losing trade, that's that that's some good odds. Even if I add a zero to that or two zeros, that's <laughs> I want to see more of that. Um, I wasn't able to get out profitably or like break even, just slightly green. But you know, two pennies that's it's totally fine. Um, I've had days where I finished the day down two pennies uh, multiple times and the. <laughs> That always stinks, but um, this was a good attempt, I think. And I did trade a $10 risk level, too. Uh, worst case scenario, I would have been in. It fell off a cliff. At, it cuts, you know, breaks under this 11.5, and maybe I'm out at 11. Worst case scenario, I think that would have equated to a $10 loss. And, you know, it, it's rare that I actually have to, you know, get the worst case scenario, but I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Um, yeah, just it just didn't work out. Now maybe I might try again later. I'll try and eventually do a share, but at least right now I'm not interested in that. So that's the idea there. Let's just go over the other ones. This one keeps downtrending. If it had more than just you know two green days, I would be considering it for maybe like um, an 11 a.m. reversal. Uh, no interest with AXXA. It kind of broke under it. It seems like and it came back, but it's not really a setup I'm interested in. TGGI never made a move towards the downside. OPTI is up training, but I don't. I don't think I would have traded this. I don't like the price action. CYBL nothing, nothing. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe if we were to break this range, 
Probably not the best setup, but it could do something where it breaks this. And now trends, A, A, B, B, nothing. And this one I haven't been looking at, just because it's a list of stock. I guess I see Ember's head and shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder. This would have been pretty scary, this little dip it had here. 73 to 76, it's not bad, but I just wasn't watching that one. There might not be any more trades unless something just looks super nice. I'll make an update later, but for right now I don't see anything. Okay, it is 5.16 p.m. and I'm here to call it off overall. Um, even though I made like 20 bucks from the first trade AXXA, at least if, um, you know, it were to be just perfect, the numbers equate to, you know, 20 bucks. It says that I'm up $19.30, so... I'm just going to put $19.30 as in how much I'm up today. Fidelity just, I don't know, they have weird numbers, but, you know, maybe I didn't get an exact number or whatever, but uh, I'm pretty happy that I was able to do that, and um, I'm happy that I did size up, because initially I was going to trade only 15,000 shares with AXXA, but I went up to 20. Uh, best case scenario, would have went up to 30. And um, I'm actually now green, as in... Um, even including my trading journey when I first started in uh, 20, I guess the last day of 2014 and 2015 and then 2016 when I quit and then I came back um, around 2020. Um, I've now made back all the money that I've lost in that initial journey and um, at this point I'm in the green which is pretty cool to finally see myself in the green but you know I know anything can happen I might have a losing trade and then I end up in the red again. Um, overall but um, you know I've broken past that level it's like a stock trying to break out of a level I've already broken past it it might you know dip under it but then it'll come back um, at least you know because I trade something that you know just has a good winning percentage and I keep getting better at it so I'm pretty thankful for the opportunity there it doesn't have to be the case and I want to note that ENZZ did eventually do the thing I was interested in it, it did get to the goal which was VWAP it just did not happen when I was trying it, right? Failed right here. It took a much longer, but it did do it. 11.75 to almost 12. Maybe you can count 12, but at the end of the day, this thing didn't really offer that much profitability anyway in terms of the range. So, you know, that, that was fine. TGGI would have been super nice. Best case scenario if I would have been failed here, but even if I had a higher limit price, I don't know if I would have been able to have gotten in because it immediately went from the low 70s to the high 70s pretty quickly. And um, AVVH never was an interesting thing for me because it just kept downtrending the entire time and it wasn't something that had you know several green days in a row. Uh, TGZI, again, I went over that one. OPTI, just ran out of volume. It wasn't something I was too interested in, and I didn't like how I did this move right here in the beginning. Just all ugly looking, so I never traded it. PETZ, I never paid attention to this one either. It seems like it tried to eventually turn around, you know, after it put up such a big fight. Pretty impressive. <laughs> we, we actually sold even more shares this day than the other day. Wow. Um, HMBL, nothing. AABB nothing this one could be a nice reversal at any point but maybe the promoters or whoever is behind the stock maybe it's not promoted um, there's just no price action right now it's not doing anything cool but maybe it can do something later CYBL is trying to uptrend but it's not at a very significant point anymore in a daily chart that's all I have for today again I did cross into the green line I might end up in the red line, you know, but I'm going to try not to, obviously, but I don't want to just go all crazy. Yay, I'm in the green, and then next day I'm in the red. <laughs> but, you know, I, I am at least up trending in terms of my profitability, and I think that's pretty cool. Again, pretty happy with that AXXA trade that I did here, and um, that's all I have. Um, God willing, I can keep going, and I'm um, pretty thankful. I still have a lot of things that I need to get better at, but once again, I'm thankful, and uh, we're gonna, yeah, I'm going to call it off. That's about it for today.